Three things. Number one, over at Huffington Post, Alifair Burke, the daughter of James Lee Burke, but in her own right, uh, and James Lee Burke used to write her into his novels when she was a little kid. He's one of my favorite writers. Uh, anyhow, she is now a criminal defense lawyer and a damn good one and a very, very good writer. I've read uh, two of her novels. She's also a very good writer. Um, she is suggesting over at the Huffington Post that basically the jury instructions that were decided upon before the trial by the judge made it all but certain that George Zimmerman would walk. How so? Well, in Florida, you cannot claim self-defense if you initiated the event from which you are defending yourself and did not try to get the hell out of the way. And when the state, the prosecutor, said, we want that included in the jury instructions, Don West, the defense lawyer, stood up and said, quote, well, let me point out as a matter of law, following someone on foot or by car is not against the law. That cannot be considered provocation under the law. Force means physical force or the threat of physical force. It would be error and frankly promoting miscarriage of justice if the state were to argue that to the jury. End of quote. Now, Alifair Burke says, so, and then, and then the judge said, okay, the court's not going to give it. In other words, that jury instruction was not given to the jury, that you may not consider a self-defense claim, defense, if George Zimmerman initiated the event from which he had to end up defending himself. Okay, now why? Well, Alifair Burke says, watch the video. Watch how uh, Don West emphasizes the word error. Error is a word used to invoke fear in trial court judges that they will be reversed on appeal. Coupled with a previous phrase as a matter of law, West was suggesting to the court that delivery of an aggressor exemption would be the kind of decision that would lead to reversal on appeal if Zimmerman were convicted. No trial judge wants to be referred, even a, uh, reversed, even in a case less controversial than this. Okay, I leave you with that as number item number one. Item number two. Here's what the jury instructions would have been before the Stand Your Ground law was passed in Florida. Before the stand, stand your ground laws, laws would have uh, were passed, the defendant cannot justify the use of force likely to cause death or great bodily harm unless he uses every reasonable means within his power and consistent with his own safety to avoid the danger before resorting to that force. The fact that the defendant was wrongfully attacked cannot justify his use of force likely to cause death or great bodily harm if by retreating he could have avoided the need to use that force that's how the jury instructions used to be since stand your ground was passed the new jury instruction is and i quote from judge what's her name judge nelson if George Zimmerman was not engaged in an unlawful activity and was, a, and was attacked in any place where he had a right to be, he had no duty to retreat and had the right to stand his ground and meet force with force, including deadly force, if he reasonably believed that it was necessary to do so to prevent death or great bodily harm to himself or another or to prevent the commission of a forcible felony. You get this? Before Stand Your Ground, he had the, the, the quote, the fact that the defendant was wrongfully attacked cannot justify his use of force likely to cause death or great bodily harm if by retreating he could have avoided the need to use that force. Uh, under the old law, you got to retreat. Understand your ground, pull out the gun and blow the kid away. Meanwhile, we've got commentators... I don't know if, if you grab this clip, Jim, of, uh, from this Media Matters piece. Did you get this by, did either of you guys get this audio? Okay. We've got, in fact, I can, I can play it from here. This is, this is from CNN. Just listen to this. Important. Stand your ground. We all talk about it. It did not play a role in this jury's in verdict. This jury's they verdict. didn't need to use that law. It wasn't even argued at trial. Now, wrong. That was CNN. Wrong. 
Okay, on top of that, consider this. Number three, George Zimmerman kept close watch over his neighborhood. When black men walked through or even drove through the area, he alerted the police over and over and over again. Finally, exasperated that they always got away, he went out on a rainy night armed with a loaded gun and the Stand Your Ground law looking for anybody who should not be in his largely white neighborhood. The South has a long history of this sort of thing. Today they're called neighborhood watches. They used to be called slave patrols. Prior to the Civil War and Reconstruction, the main way Southern states states maintained the institution of slavery was through local and statewide militias known as slave patrols. These patrols were in many states required monthly duty, in some cases weekly duty, for Southern white men ages uh, 17 to 47, whether they owned slaves or not. Slave patrollers traveled usually on horseback, equivalent today would be George Zimmerman's SUV, through the countryside looking for African Americans, quote, who were not where they belong, end quote. When the patrollers found black people in places where, quote, they did not belong, end quote, punishment ranged from beatings to repatriation of their slave owners to death by being whipped, hung, or shot. Some of the most comprehensive reports on the nature and extent of these slave patrols came from interviews done by the WPA. Remember the WPA? Frank, FDR started with the Works Progress Administration. They started the, something called the National Writers Project. And they went out and interviewed former slaves and the children of former slaves who were still alive in 1935 in the American South. And they documented these stories. The WPA's Georgia Writers Union, uh, the Georgia Writers Project Savannah Unit, produced a brilliant summary of stories taken from people who were alive, most of them as children during the time of slavery, about their interactions with slave patrollers. In fact, the title of the report was Drums and Shadows, Survival Stories Among the Georgia Coastal Negroes. That's the title of the piece. It was published back in in 1937. Many other oral and written histories compiled by the WPA Writers Project are now over at the Library of Congress. You can easily find this stuff. You can Google it or DuckDuckGo it. Sally Hayden published a brilliant book called Slave Patrols, Law and Violence in Virginia and the Carolinas. She quotes a lot of these WPA studies of how the slave patrollers would beat, whip, or otherwise abuse African Americans who were not, who were found off the plantation. Women were routinely raped. Men were usually beaten with sticks or whips. Here's what, here's what one story written by the WPA back in 1935. Slaves might beg to be left out of a whipping from the patrol, hoping that mercy or caprice might avoid a beating. Patrollers sometimes toyed with the slave, threatening a whipping, then let the slaves go free. The inherent arbitrariness of punishment added to the fear most slaves felt when they encountered slave patrols. One former bondsman, Alex Woods, recalled how a patrol reacted to a begging slave. He said that the patrollers wouldn't allow slaves to call on DeLord when they were whipping them, but they let them say, oh, pray, oh, pray, master. I'm quoting from the slave. Now the WPA. The harsh punishment a patrol could administer caused one former slave to, to say that meeting with a patrol was like being sold to a new master, something a slave would avoid at any cost. Few things compared to the agony a slave endured from a patroller beating. One ex-slave from South Carolina recalled what people heard when she was born. Her mother, quote, screamed as if beaten, being beaten by patrollers, end quote. It's like in the Deep South. The more things change, the more they stay the same. The slave patrol is alive and well. It, you know, it was called the slave patrol until the 1860s. Then it was called the KKK. Now, apparently, it's called the Neighborhood Watch. This is the Tom Hartman Program. And George Zimmerman was out there on slave patrol. And he got away with it. 